You can find factories in all of the regions of America, but here in the Midwest, we have one of the most productive manufacturing regions in the world. Almost everything you need is nearby. Transportation, big industrial cities, millions of men and women who do the work and raw materials. But productivity is only part of our story. Those of us who live here face some special problems that the rest of the nation should be thinking about too. But let's start at the beginning, raw materials. One of the most important is iron ore. The Masaba Range is one of the greatest producers of iron ore in the world today. At the turn of the century, when the iron mining really started on the range, and it was in the red ores, the natural ores. It's just the last 15, 20 years that we've gotten into the magnetic taconite, and that is the backbone of the Masaba Range right now. to see that the overburden of surface material and uh, rock material is moved off of the taconite so we can expose it so we can drill and blast and move it to the plant for processing. I especially like the work in the pit, you're right at the, the roots of the whole operation. I just like to see the wheels turn. Taconite is a hard, iron-bearing rock. It's shipped to Duluth and Superior in Minnesota and Wisconsin, and from there the uh, ore is transported on uh, the Great Lakes boats down to the steel mills for consumption uh, as raw material uh, in steel making. outside world, the lake ships in and out of the harbor here in this area haul mostly ore from the lakehead, Lake Superior. The steel mills are all down this area, so they have to have a method of transporting ore in bulk. The most economical method of doing that is with a ship. From the lakehead to the south end of Lake Michigan, it takes a ship about 48 hours. So every fourth day, they're back down here with 20,000 tons of raw material. The ore pellets, the coal. Midwest is where it's at. I'm a captain on a ship and a pilot. Piloting is with reference to, to landmarks. You know, you know the object when you drive a road so many times, you know what's around the next turn. You see a light and you get sort of a gut feeling, you know, if you're too close, you say, oh, you know because uh, you take a ship worth, what, $6 million? Cargo, maybe, same area, about as big as the river. It's sort of an accomplishment. Get that thing through successfully without any damage. The Great Lakes are my livelihood. I, uh, I don't know what I'd do if they weren't here. I've been at it since uh, 20, 20 years of age. In fact, 19 years of age. And if it dried up, like some people say it should, <laughs> it would probably blow my mind, huh? here is a, a very good means of transportation for getting materials, raw materials, to a steel mill or any other industry which requires a lot of raw materials. Shipping is a very cheap means of transportation. 
We don't get much shipment during the winter months because of the rivers being frozen and uh, conditions for the boats. So we usually stockpile during the summer, especially towards the end of the season. And uh, right now, it's about as large a quantity of taconite you'll see here. Right now, we're up on top of one of the piece of equipment called a hewlet, which they use to load the taconite, which you'll see in the background. And this is, comes from up in Minnesota, from the mines. From here, it's loaded with our ore bridges into the cars, which are then used to take up to the top of the furnace, which, along with uh, limestone and coke, is a start to make steel. steel or iron coming out of a furnace. I've been here for 17 years, and every time you see this is something different. It's something you want to see. Sometimes you don't want to see. There's danger, there's precautions have to be taken. But yet it's always an amazement how much steel can come out of a furnace and to come out and flow like water. It's like watching water run over a dam. It's a condition that's hot, hard, tedious work. Yet you see something like this and you know that after all this work, it's all coming out and it's just money in a bank right now. This is what you're seeing right now is a very, very basic, to say the infancy of steel. I don't think there's anything that anybody uses that hasn't in some way got something to do with steel. Your automobiles, uh, any mode of transportation is all basically steel. In the course of my work, I spend a lot of time driving around the Midwest. I guess the thing that really impresses you most is the flatness of the land, the expanse of sky. I think it had a lot to do with the way this part of the world developed, that the fact you could lay a railroad track across it very easily, or a, a road. The land has been crisscrossed by a series of transportation systems. The first was the river system, Mississippi, the Ohio, the Illinois River, all passed through this part of the world. Then with an explosion of growth, the railroads came in the 1850s, and it's spread its tentacles out into the land from Chicago, tapping the farmland and its riches. Then the manufacturing really came in. So what developed was a pulsing rhythm of the factories, especially around Chicago, but then later spreading to Cleveland and Detroit and the whole Great Lakes Crescent. Practically all of the gasoline automobiles constructed in this country in the early 1890s.